was just solving rational inequalities. And we have a nice comparison here with our rational being less than zero. Zero is a nice comparison. We already know that with doing domains, this denominator cannot equal zero. So we know that one plus x cannot equal zero. We do, however, know that if the top is equal to zero, we will get zero. So we know the top can equal zero. So that's the key. Whenever you have your rationals, you take the top, make it equal to zero, take the denominator, make it not equal to zero. So if we solve this, we get x equals three. So we know x can equal three. Solve this one. Oops, wrong color. and we get x cannot equal negative one. So there we go. What does this mean? So, if we place them on the graph, there's negative one, and there's three, then we know that our value could actually be, zero, be three, however, it's not equal to zero, so we still have to put an open dot. And then at this circle right here, we also put an open dot. The not equal to will always be open circles. And this one right here where it can equal zero is always gonna be an open dot if it's not equal to, and if it is equal to, then you would put a closed dot, just like before. Okay, so now what's this, what this is doing is giving us regions. So again, just like before, you have a zero and if it's not zero that means it's positive or it's negative negative. and what we're looking for here is the negatives we're looking for these this is what we want we want the negatives because it's less than zero and we don't want positives so we can plug any value we want now into this problem and if it comes out positive we cross that region off if it comes out negative we shade so we can pick any value we want. So anything less than negative one would be negative, I don't know, five. Anything in between negative one and three, so zero is a good value. And anything bigger than three, so four. Well, four, let's go five, keep it nice. So we take our original equation, plug in negative five, and check it. So three plus five is eight over negative four, which is negative two, which is less than zero. It's what we're looking for. So we can shade. Now let's check the middle one. We have three minus zero over one plus zero. Is that less than zero? Let's find out. Three over one is not less than zero. So three is not less than zero, we cross it off. Now we go to our last region, five, plug it in, and that would be negative two over six, which is negative and less than zero. So again, we shade that region. And that's it, that's our answers. So we have from negative infinity to negative one, union, parenthesis, three to infinity. And like I said, the ones where it can equal zero, your tops, if this was a less than or equal to, that would be a bracket. But since it's not, it's an open circle, which makes it a parenthesis. And this is our answer. So if you want to see what it looks like graphically, I've already graphed this, and there's what it is. This red line right down the middle here, this right here is x equals to zero. So that would mean that everything down here is negative and that everything up here is positive. So this is all the greater than zero. This is all the less than zero. So if we go back to what we found, we found that x cannot equal negative one. And you notice we have a vertical asymptote right there, right at negative one. And then we also know that x cannot equal three because it's less than or equal to zero at that point, but that was the value for the numerator. So we put it 
right there and you see that's where it crosses. Okay, so now shading wise we're looking for all the x all the y values that come out negative. So if you plug in any x in this region, it comes out negative. In fact, we plugged in negative 5 and it gave us the negative 2. See? Which is less than 0, which is why we shade this whole thing right here. These are all the x values that give us negative y's. And then the same thing happens here. These are also less than 0. These are also in the negative region. So that's why we shade that region. And if you go back and look, that's what we got. So that's all we're looking for. If it's less than zero, you're looking for all the values that come out negative. And if you know when it has a vertical asymptote or when it actually crosses zero, right there, that's the numerator and that's the denominator, then we know how our graph is being cut, which means we can just plug in values into each region. So let's try another one. So Again, the bottom is our cannot equal zero. And the top is our equals to zero. So let's do the top one first since I already have blue selected. So if we subtract five from both sides, that gives us a dot at five. So x can equal five. We put five on the graph. And this time we put a closed dot because it equals 5. Now let's do the not equal to. So we go x squared minus x minus 2 cannot be 0. Since it has a square, we're factoring it. And then solving this gives us x cannot be 2 and x cannot be negative 1. So we cannot have a 2 or a negative 1. So if we put those on there, we get negative 1 open dot, 2, it doesn't even matter if they're perspective, they're just for reference, close dot. And so now we know that we have a vertical asymptote here, a vertical asymptote here, and our graph is going to cross here, just like it did up here. So it'll cross at our x equals values and have vertical asymptotes at our undefined. So now we go back to our inequality and it says that it's less than zero. So we don't want the positives, we want the region down here. We want all of our negatives. So we want the negatives, we don't want positives. So our answer should always come out negative and if they do, that's the region we shade. If it came out positive, we cross it off. So let's try some. So any value in here, negative two. Any value in here, so zero, I'll do three, and 7. And we just have to plug it in. Now I'm going to plug it into the factored form of the denominator and the numerator to make it a little bit nicer. So we have 5 minus negative 2. So there's the top, there's the factored version of the bottom with the 5 plugged in. It's right here. Which is all positive, so we cross it off. We go on to 0, plug it in, and we get positive 5, negative 2, and positive 1. That one negative makes this whole thing negative, so we shade. And then we just keep moving across which gives us positive, positive, and positive. We don't use it. Let's move on to the next one, which is less than zero, so we shade. And now we can write our answer, which is negative one to two, and five to infinity. And we get a bracket because we are equal this time. Put a union, circle it, and that's our answer. And now, as we move across, Here's our graph. I've already graphed it. I've placed on it our vertical asymptotes. That's when we cannot have zero, the denominator. And that's when it equals zero. And you can see how it just cuts the graph. We have the negative, we have the positive. Positive and then negative. It cuts it into regions. And so what we want to do is not use the negative regions. I mean not use the positive regions. And we're keeping the negative because we're looking for less than. And so that's why we get to shade this region. We want this and we want this. These are all the x values that will give us negatives less than zero and these are all the x values that give us positives which is greater than zero and that's not what we're looking for. Alright, let's put all of it together again. So you can always use your graphing calculator to get a, a picture of what's going on. It's our last one. 
So if you notice, this one doesn't have zero. So what we have to do is solve it. So you need to bring that one over and put a minus in there. And then now we have it greater than or equal to zero. But we don't have a numerator and denominator, so we have to use common denominators. And our common denominator would be 2 minus x and 2 plus x. So this one's missing the 2 plus x, and this one's missing the 2 minus x. Then distributing it gives us 6 plus 3x. I'm going to include the minus, minus 2x, and negative times a negative would be plus x squared. So basically we did this, and that gives us minus 2x plus x squared, all over our common denominator of 2 minus x, 2 plus x. And just keep simplifying, so we have x squared plus x plus 6 all over 2 minus x, 2 plus x it is greater than 0. And the top is not factorable, so we want to try to use quadratic formula on it to see if we have any real values. So solving with the quadratic formula, you notice that we have a non-real right there. So since we have a non-real, x can equal nothing. We're not going to have any blue circles on this, no blue open dots, because the, the numerator will not equal a real value. But the denominator, we have 2 and negative 2. So we do have some red circles. Let me put those back in red, negative 2 and 2. So we have an open dot at negative 2 and a closed dot at 2. And then now we just have to test them. So we'll use negative 3, 0, and 3. So let's plug it in. Well, now that we know that we're looking for positives, you don't even have to finish it. You just know positive on top, because squared, and that's going to be positive. So positive plus positive. That's positive, because you make a plus, and that's negative. And so if we have a negative, we know it's less than 0. And then over here, it's all positive, so it's greater than 0. And over here, we have that one negative, which turns everything negative, so less than 0. So that's the only region we get to shade, because we're looking for greater than 0. We're looking for the positive region. And so our answer here would be negative 2 to 2. I just made a mistake. This is supposed to be a open dot, because it's not equal to it. So there's our true shading, which is why we get negative 2 to 2. And that's everything. Thank you.